So, today's project is the installation of the X71 sport suspension uh, into a 981 Cayman S. So, I bought this from Suncoast, very complete kit. These are the uh, front struts and these are the rears. Sway bars front and rear, as well as a lot of bolts, uh, which are deemed one time use. Some of these I won't use, or at least I hope not to use. Uh, the ones I know I won't would be what I think these are the caliper bolts. I've replaced those with a uh, aftermarket kit, so I don't need those. This here tells me that they expect me to take the drive shaft out, which I will try not to do. And then a bunch of other bolts here that are pretty straightforward. So lots of work, but I don't think it'll be too tedious. Pretty straightforward. So anyway, we'll get started. And oh, also. Which I thought was funny, uh, Porsche has their own zip ties, so I'm curious how much these would have cost, but uh, overall this kit was actually super cheap for, for what it does in terms of performance versus its price, it's a fantastic value, so to me this was um, a very good steal, so thank you Suncoast for taking my money. First step is to get the car up, so I'm using Quick Jacks, I think it's a 3500 and it fits, so the 3500 just fits this car since the uh, jack points are pretty spread out. So I actually just have it mounted over here so I don't have to move this. But sneak the lines over, center your points. And so what we'll do is lift it up. Okay, so up. You'll hear some noises and tires, but it's fine. I used to use uh, two jacks to get this car up, and it was always some gymnastics. So this is a much easier, and I think, re repeatable method. All right, so I'll lock it in, and then we can start taking the wheels off. All right, so wheels are off uh, around all four corners. So what I'm gonna do is start in the front, uh, get the struts out, then get the bars out, and then work on the rear. I like doing the more difficult parts first, and then uh, do the easier parts with suspension. Um, I could do the opposite direction with other stuff. So anyway, we'll get started with uh, going through that. And I've got a workshop manual also, so I'll be looking at that. Uh, and deviating uh, from that, but I want to at least get baseline what things come off and torque values when I need to put things back on. So let's get started. All right, number two. So I had, sorry about the light. So initially I had these spring compressors because I owned a uh, Japanese car. So this was sufficiently long, but now I've switched to German cars. So I want to use this because I want to get the. Um, tension out of this so I think I can drop the, the top strut uh, top hat once I disconnect it and then kind of slide slide this out of here but this rod is too long so what I'm gonna do is cut it I'm just gonna modify the tool a bit since I don't foresee going back to Japanese cars anytime soon and if I do I just need to buy a new one if it doesn't fit so what I'm gonna do is cut this bar here across um, and I guess that's it and see if it fits. I'll try one and then the other has a little more space so it should be all right. Uh, so anyway, so that'll be the <laughs> next tool modification. All right, so I made some stubby uh, compressors here. So just cut these down with a uh, grinder. It took about two minutes, I guess. And I'll start ratcheting these down and see if I can get some distance here. If not, I'll need to just pop the joint at the bottom but I'm trying to avoid doing that so anyway that's what it looks like and uh, we'll see how it goes so much pushing and shoving and moving around and I had to take the caliper off I forgot to do that um, so after all that this is out so um, as you see I did not need to take the uh, lower uh, connection off so I was able to pull this straight out. Um, we'll see how it goes on the rear since I won't have the ability to move this because you know in the rear there would be a drive shaft coming through here but 
Anyway, I got it off and it just barely went through the seam. I had to really push down on this to get it to swing out. And then after that, it's slipped right off. So interesting because the, oops, I'll show you. As you'd expect, the short one is quite a bit shorter. So on the right is the um, one that's going in. And on the left is the uh, one I pulled out. So you can see it's about an inch or so shorter. So much easier to go in. And you can also see that the hat is a little thinner uh, in terms of height. So it's interesting observations. So anyway, we'll go in reverse and then we'll be done for the strut for this corner. And then I'll start working on the uh, right side and then we'll get to uh, starting to attack these um, front sway bar, which has to, I have to pry, not pry, but I have to pull down the front subframe and I think there's a cast tank that I'll need to support depending on how much fuel I have. So anyway, we'll just keep going and keep wrenching. All right, so um, the sway bar in link to the sway bar, the connection here is a 16 millimeter as you see. I prefer a ratchet, but you don't need to in this case, it's optional. And also a T30, so you can see T30, 16 millimeter. So that's how you get this bolt off. Um, otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. So once I get this off, I'll reconnect the other side to the uh, strut side, and then I'll leave the sway bar end open because I've got to take all of this off to get to it. And I'll do that another day. But just for those who have done this um, suspensions before, but trying to figure out what tools they need, uh, 16 and a T30, and you're done with the sway bar and links. So. There you go. All right, so everything's out. Everything's time to come in. So that bolt here, which is the strut wheel carrier to suspension slash stabilizer, that is the one where I'm gonna use my homemade tool. If you remember, we're gonna get it. So I'm gonna use that to hold on to, um, uh, let me get my light. So that nut right there is pretty thin my wrenches don't fit it so as you remember from earlier I'm using that to just hold it I'll torque that to uh, 63 foot-pounds uh, 83 newton meters and that'll be done for that the bolt on the other side of the link I will get the value for that uh, once I get to the stabilizer bar but I'm not doing that today so uh, so that's that for that um, it's all pushed in as you can see my jack is actually forcing it uh, upward so we're in good position up here these are done to 24 foot pounds or 63 uh, Newton meters so this will be um, less force so I'm gonna try to line it up so I can get close to it even though it will need an alignment I'll get it close to where the paint marks are as far as the uh, position and also, that arrow there tells you where the front of the car should be. So if you ever get confused as to if you spin this, where to go. Number one, it doesn't spin very easily. And if it does spin, just move it back to that. At the bottom of it, you'll see these marks. There's actually a little tab, and I think you can see it. But see that little square tab hanging out? That actually is, let's see if it'll focus. But that is the, um, it's, it's, I can't get it, but anyway, you'll see it. But that black tab that's sticking off of the strut brace, there it is. That, so that is, once that levels out with the wheel carrier, you're, for, you're as far as in as you need to go. So it's, it's fairly straightforward. It's getting this thing out is much more difficult than putting a shorter one in. So anyway, let's get the wrench in. Okay, so the, um, this, I'm not sure where my light is, but Anyway, the bolt over here, you saw it in the, earlier in the video. So this bolt here just needs to get torqued down while you hold on this side. Um, I thought because this is an 18, this is an 18 millimeter, I thought that would be an 18 millimeter because I can't get an actual, um, I should have did it when it came off. But anyway, I cut down my uh, 18, as you can see, I cut it down 
it's 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 a craftsman and so I have snap ones that I won't cut but this one here I cut down so I can get in it because you need a kind of a slim fit so that's what I cut down with a die grinder and it fits perfectly but from a from a thickness perspective but as far as the diameter I actually think that this side is a 17 and if I take it off I would notice but anyway it was enough to hold it so anyway I cut down an old 18 I had and it's enough to hold it and then I can torque this side to uh, 63 newton meters so just be prepared to probably cut down a 17 uh, in addition to your 18 but I think me cutting this 18 actually is um, useful in the future since I've run into problems like this before so anyway the whole point of this video is just to show tips on how to do this so you don't struggle or become ill prepared in terms of tool set and such so um, so anyway it's now tight enough and I'm gonna just hold this with the um, hold this on this side use my torque wrench on this side and I'm done here then I'll go up top and uh, torque those down as well so anyway just wanted to add that once I do that um, put the caliper pack on torque that and I'm essentially done over here sway bar will be the next part as I mentioned that'll be another day and that's uh, whoops and so that's sorry I don't have my light but anyway that's what that is there and it runs over there so not so hard to do just need to get under take some panels off so that's it so I know I'm kind of piecing little bits of, of the whole install together so hopefully this all makes sense when someone sees it and digest it so I'm on the driver I'm sorry I'm on the passenger side and here there's my stubby blocks I'll squeeze that down the bolt here is out this is a very easy bolt to get out all that's out and all that stuff so what I'm gonna do is which I didn't do on the driver's side is show this compressed and this this hanging out so basically this if you look at my flashlight this will then hang out just past the fender here and then I'll be able to slip the whole thing out the key is getting past this lip so you have to compress this quite far then you've got to push the top hat down so it actually takes advantage of what you've compressed and then you swing this whole assembly out now it, it, it will swing out absolutely it's just that it's very tight so you've got to make sure that down to the millimeter you're taking advantage of what you've created with your new custom made fancy uh, you know compression uh, springs uh, tools here so that's the key here so I'm only I'm by myself so I can't really show you the video of watching me struggle for your comedy but it will it'll make sense once I show you this view and then I'll show you the view once I actually clear uh, the, the lip right there so anyway all right I'll piece this together and hopefully this makes more sense all right, this goes much quicker when you've done it once but anyway this is what I'm talking about so at this point of course I forget my light but at this point I what I do is I push down here with my foot I know it's not Porsche Tech approved but I push down here with my foot which extends the lower control arms down to their limit these are extremely robust I don't anticipate breaking these nor the tie rod here so what I do is I push down here and I actually get a rag and I put it over here and I slowly just kind of not don't get your fingers between this but just kind of feel your fingers to figure out how much gap you have and then when you feel you've got that moment push a little bit further with your with your foot and then it'll come right out so again these are the cut um, cut pre compressors that I created so you can see how far I've compressed them so it's um it's a very tight fit and as you see on the left I've used all of what I have so you literally have to exhaust um, the shortened uh, you know compression tools threads so anyway comes out and at this point because this bolts is out this will slide out so I'm gonna stop video so I can get this out I don't like this spring under tension uh, open to space so I'm gonna get this out and relieve it as soon as I can so anyway but that's what it looks like just so you're clear all right so bottom plate off here which is I think it's eight ten screws so those are hit on held on by uh, t25 torque screws 
and then there's two 10 millimeter plastic nuts so this is just a few minutes of work uh, as you can see all this debris is from I've never taken this panel down so this is like seven years yeah going on seven years of dirt and uh, gravel from the street so drop the back of it back there first before up here so that this stuff doesn't all fall in your eyes and, and annoy you but this is the subframe those two bolts there are holding the uh, sway bar on so I'll I think I'll, I'll definitely take those bolts out but also drop those bolts in the back and basically loosen this whole thing up the uh, gas tank is in the center here so I'll support that while I do it should be just turning some some uh, screws slowly but otherwise pretty straightforward and I got a bunch of bolts um, as well to replace so anything that looks like I need to replace it I'll replace it so anyway let's get started on today all right so all right so these two bolts here are for the sway bar which is here so they go that way and over here so it's a 16 millimeter here and then it's a I'll show you it's a 15 millimeter oh, let me go this way so it's a 15 millimeter up here so at this point you'll see two wrenches here so I got a socket on the right one which is gives you the proper space so it's a you know long limb socket and then I've got a wrench on the other one because the steering uh, tie bar uh, the steering power steering tie bars in the way so these are just a hole I feel it's a loose 15 but it's not a 14 but I know it's not SAE so I'm gonna hold with the 15 just to hold the bolt while I uh, loosen it down at the bottom so I'll get this off and then as you'll see I don't have a lift or anything so I'm using my uh, my jack here to hold this uh, while things start to slowly uh, lower which it has not yet even though I've got quite a few bolts out and I've got to get some more bolts over there but I'm not loosening the power steering I mean I'm not tight I'm not removing the power steering bolts I'm gonna as far as the uh, the uh, assembly I'm just gonna loosen them so that's one there and then there's another one there which is loosened as you can see so I'm gonna keep those on just so I can keep placement and I don't think I need to disturb that so everything my theory is everything in front of the sway bar obviously needs to come out because I think the sway bar has to come out through the front. So, and then for the ones in the rear, I will continue to loosen them. Where are they? It's hard to do this filming. So these bolts here are holding the rear of the subframe one. These are now loose. I've only got two hands, but they're loose right now. So what I'll do is continue to loosen them and then continue to drop my jack and see if the front starts to come down with the gas tank which is strapped onto it and uh, give me enough space and then see exactly how I can wiggle this thing out. It's got a big bend as you know here so it'll be um, interesting to see how this is going to work but I think it'll work so I'll keep continue on here. So, analyzing how to get this bar out so I'm thinking I have to get the tie rods out uh, this is out and then I'm dropping the uh, support brace that's behind the cross member. I was calling this a subframe. This is actually a cross member. So it's the connection back there is, is lowering it down. But I still need more space because that bend right there won't completely come out here. So I'm going to remove this. So first is take the 18 millimeter, remember the one I cut, uh, take that as well as a T40 to counter it and then get that bolt off and that'll come off pretty easy. Then take a ball joint separator and where's my finger? Then pop that, pop that down, this will pop out. And then um, I've got a replacement bolt for that so that'll go back in. And then I can just kind of swing this out and out of the way and then swing this bar out of the way. But right now this one's loose um, because that was, there's a bolt that goes up. So slowly just making some clearance. Um, so it's just turning wrenches, nothing difficult at this point, just taking a long time just because I'm trying to figure it out and not disturb as much as I can. So I just put this ball separator on. This is an OEM one that I bought at AutoZone. I didn't get the Porsche specific one. 
and literally I, I this is fascinating I'm starting to screw this and the whole thing just pops out so it's uh you can see it's already out so this is really a blessing compared to my M3 which sounded like a shotgun went off when I pop, pop those off so anyway one tip put the nut back don't take the nut all the way off put it back on because that here is going to press down on something you don't want to ruin the torx pattern uh, on here so use the nut since you're replacing it anyway use the nut as a surface and that'll pop it out and you can preserve your uh, threads so we'll just take this off Uh, it's coming off. I put a, I put quite a few threads. I wanted to. So anyway, we take that off, and this should fall out. Yeah. So we're done. So now I can get more space and move this up. Now that way, so I can get the bar out. So making some progress, but otherwise, it's. I should, probably shouldn't say this. I think this is the most difficult part of putting the suspension in on the, on the Cayman S. So right now, it's just turning nuts and just discovering. So I'm going very slow. But this is quite a bit better than BMWs in terms of not having things um, go wrong. But this car isn't driven in the winter, so I don't have any rust. I don't have any corrosion issues here. So otherwise, it's um, pretty straightforward. But yeah, so um, now I'll piece this little bit together and hopefully it's useful to others. Oh man, this was tough. Not tough, but so... These are the bars. At the bottom is the one I'm putting in. The top one is the one that I'm replacing. So, stand, uh, sport here, standard here. And um, you can see, well, not so clear, but it is thicker when you look at this in person. But, so, to get it out, use, so, I was told not to do it, but I didn't see a way out of it, but the, um, the um, steering rack had to get removed. It was holding the whole thing up. So once I released that bolt there, uh, everything kind of fell out and I had space. And then I had to twist this thing out. It's a rubber bushing here. So I had to kind of pull this aside and then just kind of peel this whole thing out. The problem was this coolant hose here, as you see there, uh, runs along. All right. So it runs along there and it gets in the way. So as you can see down there, it just runs all the way across. So that was my hiccup in terms of getting off. So now what I'm gonna do is um, clean up a bit and then start putting things back together. So, but a lot of things had to come off. So under there, that's the, um, that's the V brace that connects to the uh, body of the car to the cross member. So, there's a lot of things that are out. The gas tank is held on by itself, so the internet's like, oh, you gotta hold on to your gas tank. Um, there's actually a strap that's holding the main gas tank up. So, yeah, you can't see it here, but there is a uh, straps, tie straps onto the gas tank, not the ones that you see at the bottom that connect to the, um, the brace I just showed you. So, I am not supporting the gas tank right now. I'm supporting the subframe here and uh, just kind of peeled it down enough to get space. So that's the space you need for reference. And that's kind of how I would look if I was at the tie bar bolt. And um, so yeah, so I'll get cleaned up. I'll pop the other one back in and go from reverse and then torque everything down. Most things are 68 foot pounds with 90 degree um, additionals. So I'll go through that, but I've got a workshop manual that'll get me through most of it. The small ones are, you know, good and tight, so I'll, I'll manage those. So anyway, that's it, and um, hopefully this all goes back together pretty cleanly, but so far, just a lot of discovery. So, the front cross member uh, bolts, you'll see them, but there's four in a line. Uh, on the left are the four bolts that came out of the car. This one here is interesting to me. It's like a bolt knotted onto this, but it's got not a good, anyway, so this bolt is actually equivalent in thread and such to that one. So 
because Suncoast didn't label any bolts, you're you're left with kind of piecing things together. Uh, so everything is kind of matching up. So it's actually quite comprehensive. Even they even the tire uh, tie rod bolts, which are actually super easy to get out. Um, those came with it as well. So these are the replacements. These are the originals. So just to let you know that um, when you start opening your parts case, that's what you'll see. And that's the part number. Um, they took one out because I only needed four for this install. So uh, just a note about opening your package if you're getting it from Suncoast or someone who's packaging it for you or if you're doing it yourself. Okay, so the bolts are all in. They're all snugged in. The rear plate is in place here. These two bolts came with it. I don't have the torque value for these bolts, but I assume they're going to be something a little less than um, than 67. The reason I say 67, there's a lot of different 67s on these cross members and braces here. So that is going to be something less. I'm just going to snug it until it locks. It's a one-time use, as you'll get with your Suncoast kit. And then this bolt, where is it? This bolt here did not come with the kit. Uh, so I'm reusing this. I'm going to snug it down just quite tight, but I'm not going to put Gorilla Force on it, but probably about the 60 foot-pound range. These two bolts here, as you see, those are ho holding on to uh, coolant pipes, 15, 20, I think it's 22 in there, but I'm just going to snug them down. These are um, don't need to be Gorilla tight, as you can see, they're quite small. Flipping around, you'll see the gas tank here. Um, and again, I did not need to support the gas tank as it supported itself. This strap here is holding on to some cosmetic panel. Uh, so it did not need to get removed. This here is the steering, uh, steering assembly bolt. That's the driver's side bolt. Left side bolt is right there. These are to 52 foot pounds. Uh, and they did not come with the kit. Uh, people are saying that, again, I mentioned in the other video, people are saying that you don't need to drop this completely, but I, I needed to because I couldn't get the distance um, required to get the bar out. So, those are 52 foot-pounds. These bolts here, as you see those three bolts, here, let me do that, so those three bolts there are all 62 foot-pounds. The leftmost one is holding on to the control arm for the suspension. That one is 67 foot-pounds in 180 degrees. These two are 67 pounds in 90 degrees. And this one here, these two here are the bars that hold on to the sway bar that caused you all this grief. So these I just snug down quite tight. I couldn't find a value for these. I got tired of looking through the workshop manual. But they're quite tight. And if you have noise, they're fairly easy to get to. So anyway all this is ready and again I won't go through all that but it's the same on this side outer ones 180 inners are 67 and 90 degrees so that's about it for down here um, I'm using the jack just to keep things up so that things line up so as you drop this obviously everything gets out of alignment but once you lift up uh, things went together quite nicely so Overall, a lot of tweaking, but um, but pretty straightforward. Oh, I gotta remember. So these bolts here came with the pack. Uh, these hold the rear of the control. The, uh, sorry, these hold the rear of the cross member. These bolts here, you have to replace these. Don't drop them all four, because then you'll lose. You know, the, the, the control, the, the cross member will start to drop. So just pull them out one at a time. So make sure you've got three snugged and then replace one. And that's what I did. So you don't have to worry about movement, um, any shifting of weight. And because my jack is only on the front, if the rear wanted to drop, then it, it would be free to drop. So just pull one bolt out and put one bolt back in, and then go to the second, third, and fourth, and you're done. So fairly easy. Uh, they go in by hand all the way until they need to tighten. So I'll torque everything down and then Start putting the plates, the, the panels back on under here, and then get the tie rods connected back to the wheel assembly uh, over there, as you can see. And then I gotta get that sway bar connected, which is uh, pretty tight right now, but the car will start to loosen up those bushings. So, 
So anyway, that's that's it. So I'm kind of getting on the final stretch of today. All right, so starting on the rear, I'll start taking these bolts off here. This is a 16 and a T30, same as the front. And then I'll take these four bolts off and it should be able to just slide this out from under the uh, reinforcement plate here. So sway bar looks very straightforward. And then for the spring, which I can't see right now, but uh, what I'll do is just start taking things apart. I'm not gonna, that's the electronic parking brake assembly. I'll just extend that cable, get it from the little bracket that's holding it and uh, not take any of that apart and see if I can compress the spring like I did in the front and then just kind of squeeze this out. So anyway, let's get started with this first. This is pretty straightforward. You can do this by hand and uh, we'll just continue on. Okay, so the sway bar came out in about five minutes. It was actually quite simple. Uh, so you can see the part number comparison here. So on the top is the old bar. Uh, the new bar, which is quite a bit heavier, uh, is below here. So one thing about the bushings, this is the old bushing. Here, I'll put them beside each other. This is the old bushing here at 50 some thousand miles. This is the new bushing. Sorry, I can't get good light here, but they actually look okay uh, at 50 some uh, thousand miles, 55,000. So um, these actually wear really well. This lining on the inside, which uh, I think you can see there. Yeah, that lining there, it's a nice touch because it really prevents wear in here so you don't have to worry about this area rusting here because of um, any debris that gets in here and just starts taking away the uh, coating and then introduces moisture and oxygen in here to start rusting. So. Very good, um, very good design here by Porsche. So I'll slip these on on the new one and then we'll pop it back in. Also, you know that the, the ends are quite a bit different. Uh, this one here is much wider here uh, than the previous one. So anyway, that's it. So after some normal tinkering, got the brake out, or I got the brake off the rotor holes where it mounts. Bit one time use bolts T55s, the uh, speed sensor, and the electronic parking brake. That's all on the harness here. So that's brake harness and that's the uh, speed sensor harness. So little 10 millimeter uh, was for this hole here. Tiny little thing. So what I'm gonna do is uh, unscrew this one and also where's the other one? This is the second, yeah. Uh, second one on the back. So let's screw both of these, as you can see. And then I'll start to compress that spring. So I, the drive shaft is going to be kind of tricky because it's going to limit how much I can push this whole thing down. And what's also going to complicate it is look how high that hat is. So I got to drop that down enough to get out. So let's see how this turns out. And if it turns out well, then I, I will uh, be able to move along. But just like the front, it's just a lot of discovery. Uh, I don't want to take that nut off and try to get the drive shaft off, take all this off. So I'm trying to avoid doing that. Um, I'd like to try this first since all this has to come off anyway. But uh, I typically don't like to mess with rear bearings if I don't need to. That is it. All right, so for those who are gonna uh, tackle the rear suspension and the, take the whole drive shaft off the diff uh, direction, which is where I'm going because I can't compress uh, these shocks, these are the new ones, but I can't compress the old ones down further enough to get it out, so the drive shaft has to come out. Uh, so I'm going that route instead of uh, press the wheel carrier out off from the drive shaft because I don't have a 400 foot pound torque wrench. So if you're going this route, these uh, are the bolts that hold the uh, axle onto the diff, these triple squares. So to do this, uh, you need a tool like this, which is a 10 uh, millimeter that I got from Gear Wrench. So I got the set because I didn't know and no one actually documented what fits it. So 
here I am documenting it. So the tin fits, as you can see. So uh, yeah, and those are the uh, bolts. You need 12 of them, they come in a five pack and then your supplier will give you uh, 12 of them like that. So anyway, that's it. For the sake of being thorough here. So I'm halfway, am I halfway? More than halfway through getting the, um, let me get my light in here. More than halfway through getting the, the bolts out. So what I have, the car is in neutral right now so I can just rotate. So basically I'm just using this to, uh, as you can see here, I'm rotating the, let's see if this works. Uh, this may work. So what I'm doing is I'm just rotating the brake rotor here to uh, get to the bolts. And so I'm coming in kind of from the rear uh, in this direction since I have the most space. Uh, but I'm doing this by hand. Uh, I mean, they're in there tight. They're probably, my guess is they're 50, 60 pounds, but I'll confirm that with the workshop manual. But I'm just pulling these out by hand and I'm rotating to get access to each bolt. And then I'm marking where the um, uh, where these little couplers are at. So I'm putting a dot on the, the drive shaft to know that between the bolts um, that flank the dot uh, to re-replace uh, re them in the same manner. So this is only taking 10 minutes or so once you're here. Uh, but again, 10 millimeters seems to be working out well, but um, we'll wait until I get to the end where we can say that. But otherwise, going well. And again, to hold this, because you have to counter your socket, I'm just actually holding onto the rotor by the space uh, where the caliper usually holds, and I'm just holding it. Being careful to hold gloves because you don't want to cause an injury hitting the uh, shield here. So just hold here and make sure it doesn't move. And with um, some forearm strength, you get these out pretty cleanly. And as you see, again, this isn't a this isn't a uh, winter-driven car, but these bolts are coming out looking extremely well. I don't even know if they're one-time replaced. I'm going to replace them anyway. Uh, it just seems to be a critical part of the car. But so we have so far this bolt out, which used the uh, ball joint separator. This was quite easy, although it is quite loaded here so it doesn't move very much so you'd have to really manhandle not manhandle but encourage it to come out uh, since it doesn't move in that direction very very much it's got a rubber bushing on the other end um, as you'd expect so with that out and with the drivetrain sorry with the drivetrain out and loose and protect it so I don't scratch it or do anything uh, I put this bolt back in so that the strut is holding the carrier so the big challenge was to get this lower bolt here uh, loose. I didn't want to do two of them, which is this. I'd have to undo this, this uh, connection here as well as over here. So I thought, let me just tackle this. Once I have this loose, I can then lower this down, somehow get this out from under it, and then lift the whole thing out. So that's the plan. So getting this loose, required me to load it uh, a bit so I can take the weight of it off of here and so what you see is my jack and a quick jack height block with the with the uh, bolts back in to add an additional area to hold the uh, assembly up so that's taking the weight off of here so I can get this off so what I'm gonna do is keep going up and take this out um, at least that's the plan and somehow get this out and then it'll just be held on by the bolts on the top side here uh, and with that bolt there still in it'll hold it all together so let's see how this tall turns out um, it's you know this the rear isn't as easy as the front so which was the front was a little tight as well so just trying to get a method here in place uh, without taking every bolt apart down here so yeah what a job. All right, so to get this out on the rear, the internet and other videos I've seen have made this super easy. It's not super easy. So starting with, let's see. So this is my first time. I haven't rehearsed getting it out. I was just trying to figure out the process here. So what I did uh, that was value added was number one, 
disconnect the drive shaft with the 10 millimeter um, triple square drive uh, sockets. Then take your toe arm off, pop that out. Then loosen, uh, loosen this, loosen this, and pop it off with your uh, separator tool. But keep the nut on here just to keep the whole thing together. Uh, then disconnect that to allow this to move more freely. So right now you see it moves very freely. Uh, so uh, take that off, but don't get this bolt out. This bolt is not so easy to get out, so just leave it. Uh, what I would not do is what I thought was value added was disconnect this. So this is for the uh, leveling sensor here that you see uh, right there. Well, kind of see, but that's better. Anyway, you don't need to disconnect this, so just leave it. And despite how simple it looks to get it, it's, it's kind of a pain to get to. So don't disconnect that. Do disconnect this. This was with uh, 18 or 20, I can't remember. Uh, anyway, disconnect this because this allows us to go further down. Uh, if not, then it would be kind of up like this and you wouldn't get the drop you need. So disconnect that as well. This is optional. This is an annoying piece. It's optional, so you can leave it on, obviously. And then once you get all of this down, and you've got a, a few bolts to hold this, the hold assembly up here, then you want to make sure this is lined up straight so things can drop. Sorry. You want to make sure this is lined up straight so this whole thing can drop down. And then when this is in its furthest down position, you're going to lift the entire assembly up and over this bolt. So it's essentially going to come up like this and come out and then you can slowly pull this whole thing out. The problem is is you've, you've just got like five inches you need to get. This drop gives you that five inches. So you don't need to take this uh, lower control arm off. You don't need to take this diagonal arm off uh, nor this one, but you do need to loosen them. So that was the process and if you see over here, this is kind of what you're left with. So, again, didn't need to take the draw shaft out uh, from the assembly. And so right now, to hold everything together, I kept this bolt in, but took the uh, sway bar in link bolt out, obviously. So, I'll take this bolt out, then this will slide out, then I'll put the other one in, and then I'll walk this thing back over uh, to the car, and then... Uh, lift it up and then down and then lift it up a bit put the nut on and then I'll slowly put things back together but make sure you have some bolts uh, up here just to tie it all together because you want to everything's going to hang off of that so essentially just going in reverse and also just as a precaution make sure you protect your drive shaft from any nicks or scars or anything like that so I use this foam uh, material but anything rags towels or whatever just um, take care of your drive shaft it's pretty expensive so so anyway that's the process uh, this took I, I know it's, it's embarrassing and I, I'll say it but it took four to five hours to figure this out and take breaks and come back and get it fresh eyes on it uh, but this is not the easiest part the front despite it being tight was much easier so uh, pick your suspension accordingly and do this only once. Uh, but the shorter one should come out easier, especially with the shorter top hat. If you've got an aftermarket, uh, it will likely drop out much easier, but I can't confirm that. So anyway, that's the end of this section. Okay, so as you can see, the passenger side is out. So I'm going to go through the steps and hopefully this makes sense uh, as I kind of go through this. So. Step one for me is take the linkage from this uh, toe arm off of the uh, strut. So you can uh, take the bolt off of here and then use a separator if that's tight. Uh, so that's step one. Step two would be take this bolt out, I think it's a 21 millimeter, uh, so that you can move this thing uh, from here up here. Step three, well, and also step 2A. Loosen this. You don't need to take it off. It's, it's awkward. It's annoying, but you don't need to take it off. 
Uh, step three would be take the bolt off of here and then uh, lift this whole assembly up. Yeah, lift this whole assembly up here so you can start straightening this a bit uh, so you can then get your separator and pop it out. You want to at least pop it out while everything's still here just so you know that it'll move. Step four uh, is to loosen this bolt here which is annoying to get to. It's an 18 millimeter but it feels like a 17 and a half. It's, 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 it's a little small I think for an 18 but it's too big for a 17. So use an 18 and I used, if I can find it, I don't have it, oh, oh, the, uh, so those ratcheting uh, wrenches are what I used and basically I was getting one tooth. Uh, I was coming in from the back side on the um, uh, front through here and I was getting one tooth and I was only able to move it a quarter of a uh, turn before the whole suspension started to drop down. So I did that last. And then once that was done, I was able to move this down. Uh, far enough where the whole assembly uh, can actually drop down. One thing I would say is don't disconnect all of the, disconnect one bolt uh, up at the top, uh, up here, disconnect, uh, I'm sorry, leave one bolt here, disconnect the other two so that you can then hold this thing with the spring. You're going to use one hand to hold it with the spring. Another is to take the bolt off, the final bolt that you've loosened up there and then this whole thing's gonna come down to the point where then you push this further, I know it sounds weird, but push this further with one arm as you hold the whole assembly with the other and then you'll find out that this, because you already popped it, will just slide out easy and then you can lift it up, right over, and then bring the whole thing back out. And then you can take it over and then continue to work. So it's a lot of positioning and such, but it is doable and once you get once you get the process on the other side, then the uh, second side goes much quicker. Uh, so that's how I did it. Um, it was 18, I had, uh, 18 here, 21 here. I think this was an 18. I think that was an 18 as well. Uh, and then a T30, as you can see, the T30 uh, to hold that, and then T30 to hold that. Uh, and so yeah, so I'm gonna go and go backwards and the bolt that actually holds the strut onto the wheel carrier Obviously you leave that in uh, Until you get it all out because it has to hold everything together uh, So anyway, that's it One thing I wanted to show was in the event that your old strut can't come out of here nicely Like as you continue to like rotate it and it doesn't slide out very nicely uh, You can open this up a bit. So once you loosen this bolt up Typically, we work with VWs and Audis a lot, but uh, typically you have uh, a tool like this which will actually split the opening so that then you can like easily slide it out. This is too small. Uh, so as you see, it's too small. So what I do is I have this, which is a, just a big flathead socket. It's an SL716, it's Pittsburgh. And so what this does is it fits actually in here and again, for the other one, I got it mostly out so the tab wasn't in the way. But on the way back for the new one, it was too tight. So what I did is I just put this with a ratchet and I just twisted it. And this slid all the way in very easily. And then once you get to the tab, you just kind of slide this down. And then by then, you would have gotten enough space where you can kind of rustle it in. So anyway, tools making your job easier here. So just, uh, uh, just a little tip here in terms of making this less of a struggle so yeah one little blooper uh, that I want to share so people don't make the same mistake uh, don't use any impact uh, gun for this entire installation just use by hand go to the gym get some muscle and you can get these big bolts out but don't use an impact gun I got lazy and used it on the uh, eccentric bolt here uh, which is not super loose but I used it on here and it spun the washer so that the little notch, I can't see, you can't see it, but there's, um, hold on, let me get my, I think I can rotate it still. All right, I don't want to do it since I got it super loose.
But anyway, there is a, a centric bolt here, so it's not shaped, as you can see, it's, it's kind of off. But there's a notch that kind of matches up this with the side of the, um, this little slot here in the bolt. Anyway, my gun was so powerful, it, it uh, twisted the bolt inside the washer, and then I couldn't get that key back lined up. So part of me was thinking, well, let me just cut that notch out and then replace the washer, cut the whole bolt off. So I'm thinking worst case, but I kept twisting it. And as the thing just continued to adjust camber, it, uh, it actually just held itself. And I was able to slowly get it back so the notch lined up with the notch, the little bump on the washer. So right now I'll just kind of wedge it off and then replace it with a new washer that I bought. So anyway, don't make the same mistake. Use your um, 18 millimeter socket to just loosen this half a turn and then this will drop down enough for you to get the uh, OEM sh strut out. So you don't need to take this bolt out. You don't really need to loosen it as much. You certainly don't need to take the nut off like I did here. I only did this to get this back on. So. What I'll do is um, get this washer off and then I'll put another one on and then I'll um, move this to match the other side's camber uh, and then I will go and get a uh, pretty thorough alignment. So lesson learned. Okay, so here's the eccentric bolt. Uh, this, as you can see that notch right there, that lines up with the notch here such that uh, if I can get this on camera. So anyway, it slides in. You roughly get the picture. Uh, but it slides into that notch. And then as you rotate, it will adjust your, your camber. My problem is, is I spun, I spun that. This was still tight on the, the bolt. And so uh, it spun it, as you can see here. Uh, focus. So as you can see here, it spun it. Tore the tore it up. So, anyway, I didn't want a damaged, compromised part uh, on the car, so I just wanted to pull this out. So this is easy to take out once you get the bolt off and once you get that off. So um, there you go, and it'll get replaced with the new set, uh, which is here with a healthy tip uh, compared to uh, that tip, as you can see. So you can see the difference. So we'll go backwards and we'll torque it now and. Uh, tidy up the suspension and we'll be done so here we are with the finished product so it actually does sit lower uh, I did take it for a test drive and it actually uh, is quite quite a uh, stiff and robust so it's actually everything I'm looking for the um, yeah the the corner again I haven't had an alignment yet I just finished this but cornering feels really solid like it's it's a lot less compliant than the uh, previous suspension so right now without an alignment this does actually um, add a lot of value here so I'm really happy with the you know 10 minute test drive for noises uh, impressions so far so anyway that's it I think um, I think this is uh, a really worthy upgrade and I recommend everyone um, kind of take a look at this before you look at the uh, more sophisticated coilovers uh, that are available out in the market. So anyway, I'm sorry for the long video, but I was trying to be complete and I hope uh, everyone found it useful. So uh, thanks for watching.